let's face it, we've seen Sega try just about everything when it comes to their true blue mascot, Sonic the Hedgehog. Over the past 23 years, we've traveled with him on his adventures, watching him turn into werehogs, fighting evil clones, mimicking Link, but most importantly, watching the blue blur grow and continue to try and capture our hearts. Sega continues to try something new in their newest installment for Nintendo Wii U, Sonic Boom, Rise of Lyric, with a new look, attitude, and gameplay style. Oh yeah! I almost forgot! I'm Supergirl Kels, and welcome to my review of Sonic Boom, Rise of Lyric for Nintendo Wii U. Another Sonic character is born, but this time it's a villain. As Sonic and the gang, Tails, Knuckles, and Amy were in the middle of once again foiling Dr. Eggman's plans, they surprisingly got outnumbered by Bannocks, including the ultimate Metal Sonic. Sonic reacts by unlocking a mysterious door to a tomb that contained a mural of Sonic and Tails. But that uh, turns out, in the tomb, it contained a cell where the most fearsome villain was kept in stone for over a thousand years, Lyric. Lyric is mean and desires destruction on all living organisms and believes everything should be ran by technology, hence why he's still alive using his bodysuit to keep him breathing which he invented himself. Sonic of course wakes up the beast and leads up to the next adventure with his friends of foiling not only Lyric's plans of taking over the world, but collecting seven crystals before him and Eggman, needed for Lyric's ultimate weapon of completing his plan. My opinion, this is the best story we've had since, like, at least Heroes. Seriously, when was the last time we had a great story that completed well and followed up well? Unlike Generations and Colors, being one of the best games gameplay-wise, it felt bland and boring when it came to the story where here in Rise of Lyric, you're always wanting a cutscene where you can watch all in order and you'll still know what's happening. It's always giving something new and an idea of the story that it's evolving, crumbling down and rising back up to the final battle. So I was really happy seeing that storyline cause my god I've been waiting for a great story since Adventure 2 days and it has finally come so I was pretty damn happy with this storyline. But before I get into gameplay, which is what everybody wants, I want to remind everyone that this is strictly my opinion of the game based on the playthrough we just finished up a couple of weeks ago. I don't want to hear, oh blah, but this part was so crap. All opinions are respected here, so if you have something to say about the game, leave it in the comments below with respect, please. But for now, let's talk about the gameplay. Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric is based off the TV hit series Sonic Boom on Cartoon Network. Hence the story being in the beginning of the middle of foiling Eggman's plans relating to some of the episodes. This is the first Sonic game in years that we've seen that's, uh, how, do, how do I say this? It's, uh, it's not produced by Sonic Team, it's actually produced by Big Red Button. Uh, as said, the gameplay mechanics are for once not about speed, but about solving puzzles and exploring large areas. What I loved about this is that it was finally something new. Even though Sonic is about speed, I sometimes always wished in a Sonic game that I can just slow down and explore what's around me in the great environment. There's hidden areas and items needed if you want to complete the game 100%. The story mode is the main part of the game, which you'll be playing hands down, which could also be played in co-op for players. I absolutely adored this. People were telling me that the frames dropped, but honestly, the only time I saw the frames drop was the running sections or when too many, too many, too, too, too many enemies would load at once, which is just as much as the single player mode. Now this leads us to into our cons about the game. The frame dropping is unbearable and frustrating. The game was obviously not complete even after years of production. The promise of 60 frames per second is just not existent. The Sonic 06 comeback of slowness is here, and when I said I wanted to explore around the area a little slower, I didn't mean like walking speed. Seriously, man, I'm faster than this hedgehog. The exploring parts were the least fave feature of the game. You don't know where you're going half the time and it doesn't even tell you. And there's way too much effort to access your map. There's like three buttons you gotta click, then it access, and then you gotta press B all over it again to get out. I feel like the use of the gamepad for the Wii U was completely ignored. The areas were too big to the point where it's confusing, especially when no one would tell you anything about where you're going. 
You're literally just left in some area which you have to get around yourself, and oh my god, frames aren't even the only problem. This stage you're in would randomly disappear, so good luck seeing in the distance where you're supposed to go. Uh, you might just have a little step that you might have to watch. The camera is also something that's a bother. Thank god you can just adjust it, but the effort exhausts you and it just leaves you frustrated. Speaking of exhaustion, am I in Werehog land? The stages are way too long. Okay, okay, hold on. Let's hold that stuff. Let's not be too picky. I'm really happy that Sega put in the effort of making longer stages because I found three minutes was too short for a stage where Sonic games have been stressing with the past few uh, titles being too short. But this is ridiculous. You could kind of see the stages are set in sections where you're with one team of either two, so Sonic and Tails or Knuckles and Tails, etc., then switches. You'll complete one section, which you can call Completed Act 1, and then Act 2 begins with your next team, followed by another cutscene. That should have been the ending point, making the levels about 20 minutes max. But nope! They threw in surprise sections to the <laughs> another single level that can take up to an hour or an hour, 10 minutes sometimes! It's just too much. Oh, I'm sorry, did your mom call you? Do you have to go somewhere? Don't bother! Cancel it! Because you can't save in the level, only the exploration parts. It's a good thing you have infinite lives. At first, I didn't like the idea because it throws away the challenge of completing the game. But then I thought about the targeted audience for this game being for kids, which gives them a chance, and especially from how long the level is, um, I wouldn't want to lose all my lives at the end of the hour in the level, and then I gotta restart from the beginning. No thanks, I'd hate this game just as much as a kid would. The main problem of the game besides speed is glitches. Not only are you slow, but glitches including Knuckles being able to jump forever to the other side of the world, stages disappearing, frames dropping, or screeching cutscenes, even Tails having no head at times, would kill me. I swear though, I did to have a damn good laugh, but holy damn. The glitches though aren't threatening, besides the famous game crash bug, which appears at random, but most glitches are actually funny. I laughed along with. You have infinite lives and nearby checkpoints, so I never found myself complaining over the glitches. They sort of reminded me of Sonic 2 Days, where Tails would glitch out completely and walking upside down or something, just dancing around town. The speed sections are short and sad because of frame drops, it makes it unpleasant, and the game is impossible to speedrun due to Sonic's unable uh, running. I mean, you could only walk or jog, whatever he's doing. Each character has their own element and gameplay style. Sonic is known for his speed and capability to quickly defeat enemies and homing attack across platforms. Tails flies high and finds hidden areas to advance the team, while Knuckles is able to bury underground and take out enemies in a punch. And even though he's slow, he can surely climb fast. Amy, being my favorite character to play as because she just felt so completed, has the ability to using platforming skill while hanging gymnastics, I guess I could say. She is also able to jump three times while everyone else has two, so this really gives you a boost for areas that you can't reach. Every character also has their own style of fighting, using their elements from previous Sonic games, like Knuckles, is Knuckles, and Amy's hammer. Sure, the game is mad glitchy, but I can't tell you that I didn't have fun. Because I did. I literally played this game six hours straight per day because everything felt so new. It felt fresh, and I felt so much potential that could have been done with this game. Although I hated exploring, I loved the actual levels and would wish that they didn't end. I loved the new areas and the ideas in each level that made you use every character in their own unique way to advance. It was always something new, and for once in a long time, we weren't just playing as only Sonic. You could switch your characters at will, so you never felt like you have to do something, which gave your own expression of freedom fighting. It, I just, oh, just love the feeling of crunching badniks, which would not be as long as Unleash's fighting areas, so it would always be exciting. But the exploring and platforming were something that they've never done before, so that's why I liked it. I don't know if it's just because I'm an adventure action type of gamer, but uh, the level sections were by far something I was in love with and would play over and over again. Boss battles as well were at random, so I loved it. It was always challenging, different, and surprising. They all looked so different rather than your typical Eggman robot at the end of each zone, so I found this also exciting. 
There's also challenge mode, which you can, well, complete challenges. You need this to complete the game 100%, but I'm sorry, that's just not worth it. There's even extra challenges on the adventure field, which you can talk to villagers and ask them, you know, if you need help. And it's like, yeah, yeah, why don't you help me here? No, I'm good, I don't need any help. Then you'd walk away. But it's kind of similar to Sonic 06, but um, that's when you can complain of glitches and the time it takes to complete the level. <sighs> it's kind of beautiful. They also introduced this um, zip lining element used by Tails' technology of when they were locked in jail. It was kind of weird, but I kind of like the way they used that. I loved flying around like Spider-Man. That was pretty interesting. It was sort of like the graphics. There was so much potential that could have been put into this. When Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric was first shown off in the trailer, we got a note saying it wasn't the final product. So of course hype was built because from what we saw the trailer it actually looked beautiful, all except for character designs. In the final product, I don't know what happened if someone dropped a bomb on Sega or if they got like a, a Freaky Friday happened or what, but it was inverted. Character designs are gorgeous in this game. I even thought cutscenes were using CGI models, but they were, weren't. It was actually the game models and it just looked so crisp. But stages? What happened? It's dark, bland, trees look plastic, and as I said before, random parts of it would disappear then reappear? The graphics weren't finished and in my opinion toned down from the trailer. The one thing that the background though stood out is the lighting. I have to give it to Sega that they always know how to use lighting better than any other game franchise. They always know how to make their characters or backgrounds stand out perfectly and it shows the Wii U's potential of color saturation with lighting effects. Especially the scene where, spoiler alert, Sonic runs into a boss of Transformers! And the way the lighting was done, it was just so beautiful. The level designs are gorgeously planned, but not fully delivered with so much polishes that could have been made. I feel like this was the game that Sonic couldn't screw up on the background because it was just w the one time we weren't running through it. So we take the most time to look at the environment. Especially that there's no time in the game, so... Uh, you can literally stand there for hours looking into the background and well, they screwed up big time. <laughs> this game could have been the most beautiful game on the Wii U ever, even more than Donkey Kong Country's Tropical Freeze, which in my opinion is the most beautiful game on the Wii U system right now. I really hope the next time they do a Sonic Boom title, they really focus on environment a bit more because it's something they've always been good at, just like music. Blech. Excuse me, I had a little something in my throat. Meh. I don't know how to feel about the music. There's sections where I'm actually blown away by the music and it fits so well it gets me moving and want me to kick that lizard breath's butt. But the problem is it just didn't feel like Sonic. I know this isn't your regular Sonic game, but uh, it's still Sonic and should have music. I felt like I was playing some third party PS3 game, not some iconic Sonic the Hedgehog game. They've always been known for their music, where here you can tell it's clearly not Sonic Team. Though bosses and main environments levels did have unique music, so I'll give them that. But areas like this? Especially the exploring area where you're taking forever to find out where you're going. The music that plays is so boring that it just puts you to sleep and even frustrates you to stop playing. It's very overused music that can get on your nerves, but overall, the music pieces are good and I think that I'd put a little remix into it to make it more sonic, which would sound pretty kick-ass. So in general, I guess it's pretty okay. Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric had an amazing potential, but sadly it just wasn't delivered in the Blue Blur's latest adventure. After three mega hits in a row, Sega needs to take a step back and learn about where this game went wrong and make sure it doesn't happen again. Though the idea and concept was great and I hope they take another shot at polishing what could have been amazing, it's a good game for the family to laugh at and enjoy for younger audiences coming into the newest branch of the universe of Sonic. If you're a fan of the TV show and just want something to pass some time, Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric is a game to pick up, but I'd wait till the price drops down to around $30-$40. Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric for Nintendo Wii U deserves a 6 out of 10.
Better luck next time, Sid. So.